Hello student, this video lecture is prepared for the heat transfer subject and I will discuss the unit number 4 that is condensation and boiling. So in the previous lecture, we had discussed the correlations for film noise condensation that means for vertical and horizontal surface. And then we discussed how to calculate the rate of heat transfer and how to calculate the mass flow rate. Then after that we have discussed the exercise 1 which is made for the vertical surface. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss the exercise number 2, then effect of non-condensable gases and heat transfer to boiling liquids. So, this is the exercise number 2. So, in previous lecture, we already discussed there are two types of a formulas for one is vertical and one is horizontal. So, this problem we have discussed. Then there are another cases that is known as the horizontal tube. So, in this horizontal tube, the condensation is occur and at that, at that horizontal tube, you have to calculate the same thing that means mean heat transfer coefficient, heat transfer rate per unit length of pipe and condensate rate. So, here I will read first the problem. Dry steam at 373 Kelvin condense on the outside surface of the horizontal pipe of 25 millimeter outer diameter. OD means outer diameter. The pipe surface is maintained at 357 Kelvin by circulating the water through it. Determine mean heat transfer coefficient heat transfer per unit length of the pipe and condensate rate per unit length of the pipe. And data is given that the properties of the condensate at the film temperature that means at this temperature through uh, 350 Kelvin are viscosity of that condensate film is given 306 into 10 to the power minus 6 Newton second per meter square. Thermal conductivity is equal to that is K 0 0.668 watt per meter Kelvin. Density 974 kg per meter cube. And latent heat that is lambda is 225 kilojoules per kg. Okay. So, this is the problem and the data is given. So, what problem state that a dry saturate uh, dry steam at 373 Kelvin. So, here this outside this tube the steam is flowing or condensed and the pipe is having 25 millimeter outer diameter. So, this outer diameter of the pipe is 25 millimeter. Uh, okay, then the pipe surface is maintained 357. So, by circulating the water through it. So, suppose the cold water is going through this pipe and it is having temperature 357 Kelvin. Okay, and outside this pipe, we are having steam which is condensed on this horizontal tube. So, tube is like this, suppose. So, steam is having temperature 373 Kelvin, this tube is having temperature 357 Kelvin. So, obviously this steam is condensed as shown in this figure. So, here we have to calculate the mean heat transfer co coefficient for this condition, then heat transfer per unit length of the pipe. So, suppose for 1 meter length if you consider, then for that length what is the heat transfer rate 
and condensate rate per unit length of the pipe. Okay. So first we have to write the formula for mean heat transfer coefficient. So this formula is different for obviously horizontal tube. So this is the formula HM that is mean heat transfer coefficient is equal to 0 0.725 into square bracket rho square g lambda k to the power 3 divided by mu d0 multiplied by delta tf bracket complete and all this thing is having power to the 1 by 4 okay so where rho is the density, g is the acceleration due to gravity, lambda is the latent heat of condensation, k is the thermal conductivity, mu means viscosity of that condensate, d0 is the outside diameter of that horizontal pipe and delta t is nothing but the difference between these two, 373 and 357. So this is called a delta tf, that means temperature difference of that fluid. So we are having all this value, we are uh, given that rho, lambda, k, mu, g. So you have to just put that value in this equation and only you have to convert here the lambda. So you have to convert that lambda which is given into kilojoule per kg. So you have to just convert by multiply into 10 to the power 3. To this value so it will become joules per kg okay so this uh, changes you have to made in this data and all remaining thing you have to put as it is so here all the things are put or all the data is put and you have to multiply by 0 0.725 this is the constant and so we have to take the calculation or uh, power of this square bracket to the 1 by 4 so after doing this calculation we obtain hm that means mean heat transfer coefficient 10864 watt per meter square kelvin so this is the unit of that hm transfer coefficient mean heat transfer coefficient then in the problem it is asked that we have to calculate the heat transfer per unit length of the pipe so here we are all uh, having the formula q is equal to h a delta t okay so this uh, area is you have to calculate for the horizontal tube so what is the area of the horizontal tube is pi d0 l and we have to calculate the heat transfer per unit length so we have to take that l in here so it will become q by l is equal to hm pi d0 into delta t delta t means saturation temperature minus that surface temperature t set t set means saturation temperature and ts is nothing but that surface temperature cubed surface temperature so we already calculated hm so put this hm here pi d0 you have to convert here d0 uh, into meter also here also you have to convert and then you have to multiply by delta t so this is the value of delta t so by doing this calculation we obtain the heat transfer per unit length is 13652 watt per meter. So why watt per meter? Because the question is asked calculate the heat transfer rate per unit length. So this is the unit of length meter. Okay. So watt per meter. Then we have already formula that is mass flow rate we have already this formula q mass flow rate that m dot is equal to q by lambda okay so that formula again you have to use here 
this formula is not written here but you are familiar with this formula mass flow rate of condenser is equal to q by lambda so where q is heat transfer rate and lambda is nothing but that latent heat of condensation so we are having q then we are having lambda value so we have to just convert that lambda into joules per second so that we have already done in previous step so just you have to put q divided by lambda then we obtain the value of mass flow rate in kg per second 6.13 into the 10 to the power minus 3 kg per second but we can write this value in kg per hour because this value is very small or sometimes it may be asked uh, you have to calculate the rate of condensation per hour so just multiply by 3600 so this is the conversion factor for second to hour so multiply by this so we obtain 22.1 kg per hour so these are the three answers we obtain for this horizontal tube then we will discuss the another uh, important point that is effect of non condensable gases sometimes in a, uh, this if the condensation is taking place in a condenser there are sometimes non condensable gases like air is present and this air affect the process of heat transfer how these non condensable gases are connected near the condensate surface so this is the condenser surface and these non condensable gases are collected here and the condensing vapor so the vapors are condensing from this side so condensing vapor must have to diffuse that means pass through the this gas film so this is the suppose a uh, white dots is non condensable gases so these gases are non condensable so the vapor which is condensed to have passed through this or diffused through this gas film and then it reaches to the this condensed surface so doing this the uh, rate of heat transfer is decrease okay so if we are having air with 1% by volume that means suppose 99% uh, we are having suppose vapor and 1% suppose we are having air then this will reduce the 60% value of for no air so if you calculate the value of uh, that hm or q that for no air and then for by taking the air so heat transfer coefficient is reduced up to 60% so therefore air vent is always provided for the condenser to eliminate the air from the system so if we look at this condenser so this is the condenser these are the pipes and outside the pipes the steam is condensed so here the condenser is taken out and cooling media is water so water is going through these pipes and it will taken out from here so if we look at this part so this is the air vent so why this air vent is uh, provided here to remove the non condensable gases like air so, uh, air is not condensed so you have to remove this air which increase the heat transfer rate okay so this is the effect of non condensable gases on condensation process so in this way we have discussed how to solve the horizontal tube problem calculate the rate of heat transfer mass flow rate and what is the effect of non condensable gases in this lecture so remaining part we will discuss in the next lecture thank you